About two months ago on the channel, I made a video talking about the 10 worst NHL trades in the past decade, and usually when people talk about trades, they like to point to the really lopsided ones and ones that have a clear winner, but usually people don't talk about the trades that worked out well for both teams. So in today's video, I want to look at 6 NHL trades since 2015 that both teams ended up winning. But before we get into today's video, if you guys are new around here, make sure to subscribe to the channel for daily NHL content and click the bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the daily NHL uploads and with that being said let's jump right into today's video. Starting the video off with one of the more recent trades and that is Nick Schmaltz being sent to Arizona in exchange for Brendan Perlini and Dylan Strom. Now at the time of this trade a lot of people thought Chicago was kind of crazy for making this move. Nick Schmaltz coming off of a breakout season obviously still a very young player and Dylan Strom and Brendan Perlini both weren't really panning out at the NHL level just yet and both kind of showed a lot of signs that they could potentially be a bust and giving up a guy the caliber of Nick Schmaltz and taking a chance like that definitely was risky for the Blackhawks but then after the trade Dylan Strom's half season spent with Chicago it looked like it flipped and Chicago were the clear-cut winners of this move with Strom putting up 51 points in 58 games for the Hawks in the 2018-19 season he came in had instant chemistry with his former teammate Alex Dabrinkit and the trade was looking fantastic but now I definitely feel like it kind of evened out Dylan Strom has cooled off a little bit still off to a pretty solid start to the season and now Nick Schmaltz is looking like an amazing number one center for the Coyotes with 14 points and 16 games and I kind of look at this trade as like a one for one now because Brendan Perlini really didn't work out with Chicago and now is a member of the Red Wings and the Blackhawks were actually able to get Alec Rajul a defensive prospect in that trade so honestly looking at it now I really do feel like both teams made out pretty well in this deal because Dylan Strom is obviously a big piece to Chicago's future playing alongside Dabrinkit and Nick Schmaltz is right now the number one center for an Arizona team that is on the rise. Moving along now to the next trade, this one taking place on June 23rd of 2018, and that was Dougie Hamilton, Michael Furland, and defensive prospect Adam Fox being sent to Carolina in exchange for defenseman Noah Hannafin and forward Elias Lindholm. And I think looking back at this trade right now, both teams have really benefited from it so far, and I think if we were to go back, both teams would have agreed to this trade over again. I know Carolina only has Dougie Hamilton to show for it, and Michael Freeland has now moved on and is a member of the Vancouver Canucks, and Adam Fox, things didn't really work out there, but Dougie Hamilton has suddenly blossomed into seemingly one of the best defensemen in the entire NHL, at least this season, with 17 points through the first 16 games of the season, a plus 8 rating, and his overall game is just seeming like it is better than it has ever been and obviously he has a lot of very good surrounding defensemen so there isn't a lot of pressure on Dougie Hamilton to have to carry the load and he's done fantastic and really flourished ever since coming to Carolina and then obviously moving over to Calgary getting Elias Lindholm who coming over from the trade was a former top draft pick fifth overall in 2013 who had really yet to become the star that he was drafted to be with the Carolina Hurricanes and then immediately fit right in with the Calgary Flames on that top line and had a breakout season with 78 points and it is looking like Lindholm is going to follow that up with another very good season as he already has 17 points through the first 19 games of the season and the other big piece that is still kind of a big factor in this trade is Noah Hannafin who is a pretty steady and reliable top four defenseman for the Calgary Flames. The big pieces of this trade are Dougie Hamilton and Elias Lindholm but it definitely is a deal sweetener that Calgary has a defenseman that kind of replaced Dougie Hamilton in the trade as well. So looking back on this I really like like it for both teams and I think in the long run it definitely benefited both sides. Moving along now to the next trade that really set up both teams for the future and that is Frederick Anderson being traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs in exchange for a 2016 first round pick and a 2017 second round pick. Now obviously at the time of this trade Toronto had a plethora of young talent and everybody knew that they were going to be a very good team very soon but they needed a goaltender and luckily for them Anaheim had a little bit of a problem in net and they had to decide between John Gibson and Frederick Anderson and they definitely made the right decision as John Gibson is one of the best goaltenders in the NHL but Frederick Anderson is a very very good starter for the Toronto Maple Leafs right now as well and those draft picks that the Anaheim Ducks got with that 2016 first they selected Max Jones who looks like a pretty promising young player for them and in the second round they drafted Maxime Comtois 50th overall who has five points this season in 12 games and is looking like a very big part of the 
future of this Anaheim team. So in my opinion, this makes this trade a win-win as Anaheim was a team that kind of needed some young players and some more draft picks and that is exactly what they got and they actually selected some good players with those picks as well and Toronto got their goaltender that they desperately needed to go along with all of the young talent that they already had on the team. Moving along now to a trade that sent Derek Stepan and Antti Ranta to the Arizona Coyotes in exchange for Anthony D'Angelo and a 2017 first round pick going back the other way to the New York Rangers and looking back at this trade right now Anthony D'Angelo is currently a pretty solid defenseman for the New York Rangers he has 12 points through the first 14 games of the season he's turned himself to a great offensive defenseman at the NHL level and with that 2017 first round pick they were able to draft Philip Hedl who's another player who looks like a huge part of the future of this New York Rangers team he got called up he's been up in the NHL over the past couple of games and so far this season in five NHL games he has three goals and in nine American Hockey League games he has three goals and six assists for nine points so he's had himself a pretty good start to the 2019 season split between the NHL and the American Hockey League and now looking at this trade from the aspect of the Arizona Coyotes they got Derek Stepan who ever since coming over has been solid for them 56 points in his first season with Arizona followed that up with 35 and this year six points in 16 games obviously doesn't have as prominent role with the team now as he did in his first year because you have guys the likes of Nick Schmaltz now in the lineup who has kind of taken over as that number one center and realistically you don't want Derek Stepan as a number one center anyways he's more of like a number two or number three center ideally and so far this season that is exactly what's been happening and he's been really solved for them ever since coming over in the trade and then they also got goaltender Auntie Ranta who I remember in the 2017-18 season people were saying should have been in the running for the Vesna trophy he was that good and then unfortunately last year was injured for basically the whole season only started 12 games and this year in five starts not the greatest numbers but still trying to get back and get in full game shape after he missed a lot of the 2017-18 season but Arizona has a great tandem with Darcy Kemper and Auntie Ranta and realistically looking back at this trade I definitely think it benefited both sides as all the players involved are now having a pretty prominent role with their team. Moving along now we have another Leafs trade that I really think did benefit both teams and that is Jake Muzzin being sent to the Leafs in exchange for Carl Grunstrom, Sean Dersey, and a 2019 first round pick that 2019 first turned out to be defensive prospect Tobias Bjornfoot who actually has already seen some NHL action albeit three games but still he looks like a pretty promising young player and at the time of this trade everybody knew that Toronto needed help on the blue line in the worst way and getting Jake Muzzin obviously was a huge addition for them and he's been pretty fantastic for the Leafs ever since coming over in 30 games last year he had 16 points was a plus 11 and everybody knows how good he is in terms of his two-way game and this season so far nine points in 16 games a plus four rating and is usually out there trying to shut down the opponent's top line a massive part of that team and now looking at it from LA's side they were a team that everybody knew their time was coming to an end in terms of them being a good NHL team and they needed to unload some of these older guys that are still pretty solid to bring back some assets and young players and draft picks and that is exactly what they did Kyle Grunstrom looks like the best piece of this trade so far he's played in four NHL games this season has two points didn't make the team out of camp but played four AHL games and lit it up with five goals and two assists for seven points he looks like a future top six forward 100% and the game I watched LA versus Toronto Grunstrom was actually on that top line with Kopitar and Jeff Carter and he looked pretty good up there and Sean Dersey looks like a really solid defensive prospect as well as he's currently playing for the Ontario reign of the American Hockey League and now finishing out the video with the big trade that sent Max Pacioretty to the Vegas Golden Knights in exchange for Thomas Tataro, Nick Suzuki, and a 2019 second round pick. Now, at the time of this trade, everybody saw it coming. We just didn't really know where Max Pacioretty was going to be dealt to, and Vegas has seemed like a perfect fit so far, as they are a team that is trying to contend right now, and Max Pacioretty fit in just perfectly, and he's now currently on a line with Mark Stone, and they've been both off to a great start to the season. Pacioretty with 14 points the first 17 games of the year. He's on pace to have one of the best seasons he's had in a very long time and obviously Montreal got Thomas Tatar in this trade and coming over he looked fantastic as last year he had 25 goals with the Canadians which was a great bounce back considering how bad of a stint he had with the Vegas Golden Knights and he's off to another good start this year with 13 points through the first 16 games of the season and even better the Montreal Canadiens getting back Nick Suzuki who is a young player only 20 years old and is already producing at the NHL level for them with three goals and three assists for six points in 16 games 
teams and obviously he's going to be a stud for the future and really I think this trade just worked out perfectly for both sides. Max Pacioretty, he needed a fresh start somewhere else and Vegas a contending team. He's fit in just nicely and Montreal a team that needs to get a little bit younger and just have a change of scenery there and that is exactly what happened with this trade and I think both teams are now better because of it. So that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to let me know down in the comment section below what are some NHL trades since 2015 that you think really benefited both teams and that we can call both teams winners in that move. And with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to this channel for daily NHL content and I will see you guys all in the next video.